Welcome to day five of the composition of the Gratitude Concert. Today, I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, see if I can get through today without breaking up completely. I'm not going to, um, to go back and recap the themes today. If, uh, if you want to, to look them up, please visit the other episodes and, and you can see how the themes are built and everything. But today I want to dive straight into the story of the day and just face it head on. So, I got a story from a mother and um, this is... Um, both a terrifying story and a beautiful story. Their very, very young son, under a year, in fact, has, uh, has an illness called tuberous sclerosis, which is, which is a chronic illness, and um, sometimes children get it, and it results in tumors of the organs and the, and the brain. And it's a very scary uh, illness, and, and this came into their lives when he was around four months old or something like that. And, and, um, and here they are, this family, four siblings, the little child included, and, and uh, the mother and the father. And, and they are in hospital a lot. And she writes how he loves music and how he has the most beautiful smile and she writes how they are in this and this is the positive thing they are in this experimental treatment and um, and um, and nobody knows if it's going to be a success but if they if it does then this will result in in improvements for, for so many young uh, children suffering from tuberous sclerosis. And it's a wonderful thing for everyone suffering from any chronic illness to know that sometimes, you know, the healthcare system sets in on, you know, saying, let's try this thing. Um, because I think it could be pretty, you know, dire if, if nothing is done for this child and so many others. And um, and I was looking at this story, and and there are some things that 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 pops up. We want to try and take the story and see where are the universal things, you know, because it's it must be such a hard thing they go through in this family, and 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 I wanted to start trying to describe, you know, imagine the happiness of the family and and. They're giving birth to this, you know, fourth child, and everybody is happy before they get struck by lightning. And yesterday there was a theme that arose um, suddenly, pretty much out of nowhere, and and it led us to, you know, there is this, and it was relating to this theme by this captain sailing the ocean where she comes up on a wave and she looks out and and uh, and for a moment everything is clear everything is is there and she and she can she can look out and and there's something up here um, because this note here the d sharp was also sort of the fairy tale interval in the story of the arcs. We had, we had that going here. <laughs> that thing there, we could go up there. And so there is something about this D sharp, in this context at least, that, um, that sort of represents the fairy, fairy tale, and birth is absolutely a, a fairy tale come true. And, and and I'm, as you know, 
You know, I'm trying to calibrate the intervals before I go into the composition, try to find out what they mean to me, what is my subjective idea of the different intervals. And I wanted to find an interval that relates to birth. What is the birth interval for me? And for me, the birth interval, you know, the first thing I'm thinking about is this intense feeling the mother must, must have of love, you know, this unrelenting, um, uncompromising love. And to me, it's here. And there is something of a fairy tale there. And if you remember back at the mother, again, who, who had uh, Meniere's disease and um, how she was sailing these things and, and and she would, she would out of, you know, you know, in her peripheral vision, she would see her children, even though she was dizzy all the time. And, and, and that interval of, they are here, you know, the children are there. And we could combine those two. So the birth interval. There is something like a family in idol, you know. And I just know that we want to come back to this birth interval and keep an anchor in that in a way. And 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 we need to take this that was just the first idea. And now we need to come into a story. Because it might be that this little child, let's call him, let's call him because he's running, the thing is he's running against time. You know, they, she writes me that all they hope now is that he will, you know, him and time will meet <clears throat> at the perfect moment where science is at the right, is at the zenith, and he will be there and it will work, right? The treatment will work. So he's running, he's racing, you know, to meet time on the top of things. And so I was out late, you know, I, I was not out late, but I was <laughs> writing. Uh, the mother, I, I, it was just very late yesterday that I found this story and decided we're going to go with that. And I, I realized it's very late. I wrote the mother and asked if I could use his real name. And she's not gotten back to me yet, so, so I, I can't use his real name. But, but we will use, um, you know, the, a child uh, version of, of um, the Greek god Hermes, right? Mercury, um, the fastest of the gods, I believe to give him some extra speed. So we'll call him Little Hermes. And, um, and so they are in this family. And even though it's wonderful that they are in this experimental treatment and everything, she writes how there is still a grief that came into their, to their home. And, and, and it is there, and they can feel it, all of them. And, and so, let's try to begin a story and make this thing transcend, you know. The family is in the house, and there is a knocking on the door and they open and it is grief and grief comes into the house and it's a strange creature. It is always looking you straight in the eye and somehow this creature is looking into the eye of 
every single one of them, the mother, the father, and little Hermes, three siblings. And grief has a big leather belt around his waist. And in this big leather belt are hooks, big hooks. And on the hooks are chains. And at the end of these chains are big rocks. And now grief goes around to each member of the family and he takes a hook with the chain and the rock. And now he ties it and hooks it into their stomach. First the mother, then the father, and then the three siblings of little Hermes. And now they are there with huge rocks tied to their stomachs and it's grief. And I think grief just goes to the corner of the living room and sits there and looks them straight in the eye. And maybe I realize in the other, you know, something snuck in around day two, you know, this deep B, you know, in the middle of everything. And I was wondering what that, in, what, what that B was, because, you know, we had it higher up um, representing a mother looking out into the world. And then suddenly, there it was, uh, like a snake in paradise. And now I think I know what it is, you know. In chronic illness, you know, no matter how, how things turn out, there is this grief that follow. And we could keep that down here. So we have birth, the birth interval. It's also a little bit fantastical. judgment. I think there is one thing we need to find here, yeah, is, that is here, little Hermes and his race against time. And hoping they will meet on the synod, synod of, of things. And um, there is a mountain. There is a mountain and There is a mountain, 
and on the top of the mountain is where time and little homies need to meet. And the family stands here. And here is the mountain. And they see little Hermes running up the hill, up the mountain. And they know that on the other side is time, the other side of the mountain, but they can't see time. And they don't know if time is having a cup of tea by the foot of the mountain on the other side. Or if time is running to meet little Hermes on the top. Because if they do, this thing will work. And him and so many other kids have better lives. Some of them survive if the thing is fatal. So we don't know. So the family is on this side of the mountain and time is on the other side of the mountain and they see little Hermes running. And running to meet time on the top of things. And, and I want to try and come in and see if we could not create his running, create him speeding time up the mountain. The family standing there. And they can't really make him run any faster. And they can't do anything to make time run exactly as it should to meet little homies. All they can do is, is be there. So they stand a big hook in their stomachs and a huge rock. And they look at little Hermes and we want him to run. And so maybe this session, maybe all it will be is just finding this theme. Let's call it Little Hermes Ascend. As he ascends the mountain and runs to find time. Let's just try and move up and have an idea in, 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 and you can imagine the low strings beginning here on the low C. when we want it to be a little bit more of a fairy tale. And I'm not going into scale names. I don't know half of them, and I don't think they matter at all. All that matters are the intervals, to me at least. And so, in this scale, when we, we come back to birth, we want the theme of the children to come in and and it has, you know, 
this note in it in, in relation to, to, to this one gives us another, you know, sense of fairy tale. You know, so that just tells me that, you know, if this is the scale that we're running at, then later when we introduce the A here, you know, instead of the G sharp, then we will we can we can invoke a sense of the fairy re reinvoke that sense of the fairy tale and the magic of birth, right, and and the magic uh, uh, children, right. And then if we go to right. a little bit magical. And so, let's just keep that in mind. And let's just try and see if we cannot create something that could be his running up the mountain. So we're starting here, you know. Um, you know, there is something about the sea coming up that is uplifting in a way in relation to the theme of the ox, right, where we had the ox going. Right, so there is something about that sea going up here that we could say is breaking out and breaking out of the status quo and running for it, you know. And so, little Hermes starts running. And I want these to alternate between the low strings maybe and the high strings, and by the high strings, you know, we could discuss which is what, but let's just include the violas in the high strings for now, or that idea. So we have basses and cello starting out and then viola and and viola taking over, violins coming in, so they can sort of just alternate. And we'll we'll do that all later, but we'll just keep it in mind. So we could start down here. We could take over there, you know. And so the interval that is going to inform us of what's happening in the story as I move up this thing. Let's just take our time, because this is, I think, a great example of seeing how we can take something that is a run of the keys and try to make that relate to certain aspects in the story, you know? So, so that's the interval where the other, you know, section of the strings take over, right? And so, when we're down here, of course, you know, the low violin string, they can't begin until, you know, G, because they don't go as low, but the viola can, and that can take over in the beginning. So we need to think about all that, and maybe we'll transpose the thing when we get to orchestrating. It's not relevant for now. We just need the idea. So it's the interval where the other section takes over. So my alternating hands in this case, right? So we just let's just find a great way of ascending a, a great way for Hermes, little Hermes, to ascend as he runs and runs time, runs against time. So, if we come up here, <clears throat> then what do I choose, you know? I know that they're going to take over on this note. And <clears throat> now, where do I take over? We have a few intervals that can do a few things, you know? Definitely, there could be... Uh, 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 let's just see what happens and what the different emotions are. So if we come up and say, let's just try with the with the fourth as as the first one. So. Right now, I'm just staying in this scale. Right. So I'm not concerning myself with an E in this case because there is no reason for me to sort of break out of the thing right now. We might do it later, but let's just, in order to keep it simple, stay in that in that um, in that scale so so it comes up right so a few things happen here right so that is back to the judgment interval right
so. And then what happens if we do it here as well? Let's try it with uh, with a third instead. Yeah. Mm. So we don't want to break the scale. So let's just try and 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 stay within those bounds. You know, so it becomes it becomes a minor, but that's okay. something interesting in, in keeping the sequence in the in the higher section a little bit longer to symbolize Hermes and then there's something chasing him like hope is chasing him or something that comes after but uh, that's not necessary for now now let's just try and keep on meditating on this thing what if we do it like a fifth Something also in, in trying to keep the intervals a little bit closer, maybe on a second. So we come up and do it just a, on a second instead. So, so just a whole note, you know. And we 
can't do that. It's not in scale. We don't, or we can, but it's just, it breaks us out of the idea. No reason to do that. So we'll just do a minor second. There is something nice about that chromaticism, just being that it's closer, not necessarily chromatic, it's not like out of scale and using all the notes and all, but, but that it's not in as harmonious intervals, you know, because there definitely is a tension going on, you know, the family standing there behind him, you know, looking at him, racing time up the mountain. So there is something there. And I have a, fe a feeling that we should do this like a long, it could be a long sequence, you know, at a moment in the concert where we really need it. And, and I would, I would love to listen to, you know, a long sequence of these strings rolling and rolling and, and fighting, finding, find, not fighting, but finding an exciting way to, to keep this build going. If you look up the work I did with, you know, we did in Lisa Stiller, you will, see a lot of building up to things. Maybe it's a bit of a, an obsession of mine, but I don't know. But anyway, so this is an interesting meditation for me. And I'm telling you, if it wasn't because, you know, I have, you know, the, you know, if I was a little bit less of, you know, of a, a complete asshole here, then I would have no problem sitting here um, letting people look at me just finding the perfect movement up or four hours or something, but of course no one would be interested in doing that. So now we'll just try and, and catch the glimpses of what sort of movement, what, what sort of, you know, what intervals are interesting here in, in relation to this story, and just try to, to make full circle for the idea phase. And then it's recorded and I can come back to it and I can hone the intervals and get them into the body and then we will get to the orchestration, then we will because I can't keep it in memory. I can't keep all the ideas in memory. My, my memory is simply not good enough to do that. And I can't write, you know, the notes down fast enough. I'm a horribly slow, you know, writer. So, so I just have to find the glimpses of, you know, this is it, this is it, this is it. And for now, in my mind, what is here representing um, the run, Hermes run, is, is the is the, the fourth. There is something there that is grand. There is at the same time this strange cosmic ju judgment in the fourth. Um, but there is also, um, but it could be both ways. It's, it could also be a manifestation of hope, right? You know, which way is the judgment going, you know? No, we will, we will not just sit back and give up everything and allow fate to steal our kid, right? You know, it, it, it's also insisting on hope. Judgment could go both ways, you know. You know, you can point your finger at God, right? You can, you know. And you can point your finger at grief, you know, and say, I see you, you know, and I'm not taking this, you know. He's going to make it. So there is that judgment in the fourth so. You know, and I know it depends on which way you see it, of course. It's a fifth if you look at it from there to there. But I'm not looking at it like that, that right now because the relationship of, 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 um, the, um, of how the, the, the strings, the sec different sections of the, of the strings will be interlocking, you know, it will be as if they're in the same, you know, in the same area, you know, it's not... It's not a, a piano going up, going up. It's, it's going to be different sections. We'll see if the organ will follow, but. Right. And then we don't want to go here. Yeah, we'll see. And now we're in a, in a minor, you know, and maybe it's, it's, it, it could be interesting to go with the fourths in general. I know we'll have some minors in there as well, and that's nice and we can tell there's a bit of hope there. And then maybe we'll go to the minor, then maybe we'll go to seconds as we move up further. We have to be super careful that we're not falling in love with the system and that it feels nice that, oh, we're starting with fourth in this octave and then we'll go to the minor thirds in this octave, you know, and oh, then we'll go to the, to the major seconds up here. You know, it feels nice like it's a puzzle, but it really doesn't matter. We need to, 
to to focus on the story and is, is it serving the story? What is it doing to the story? You know, and not be amored with the uh, with the system of things. running up the mountain. And, and what if we, you know, and I'm just, let me just try and experiment a little bit up here and we'll see what sort of sticks, you know. We have those ideas, but I really don't believe we should have a system about, you know, we should just try and see if we can capture the emotions involved. So what are they, you know? So they are hope, and hope, hope we can represent also, you know, in the insist, you know, insisting on hope, right? And then we have, of course, you know, uh, the major thirds, and in context, you know, maybe it's a cliche, but they do, they do sort of give us a forward momentum and uh, we can do this sort of, of feeling. At least that's what I get when you look at it up here, so. to this thing so they're, they're looking at him he's running up the mountain and he's catching speed but then they feel that big chain with the rock tied to their stomachs right feel this grief, this big rock tied to their abdomen, and now they realize, you know, the, you know, and so, so now the mother steps in, and she looks at her husband, and then she sees this 
big rock tied to his stomach. Now that they stand here watching their boy run for his life. And then she thinks. And then she thinks I can carry that for you. And then she reaches out and, and she takes the rock tied to her husband. And she carries it. And now he sees her rock and he picks it up and he carries it. siblings see what their parents are doing and now one after the other they pick up the rocks because they're standing close are still heavy but at least now they stand close looking at Hermes run they find out that they can carry them for one another as long as they stay close and they can carry it for one another. It's still heavy, but at least now they can carry it. And so we have the scale going up. something could hold a pedal note meaning a note that just stays there and then we could still have I don't have enough hands but we could have the B coming in so it will still be carry the grief on behalf of one another and then we move down a half note you know like I'm buckling down I'm not giving up
family together, holding the weight of the grief as long as they stay close. yesterday and we we're in the same arena we come back to that so we have the ascend up and see where can we be how can we be alternating the intervals so we're getting the emotions maybe primarily the most emotions that the family is feeling as they're standing there watching little Hermes run and and see if we cannot find a beautiful run and then then maybe come in and do a little bit of a shepherd's thing in that we don't want the run to end, so I have I have limited capabilities and limited hands and a very limited mind, and so I, you know, we're running up here, but then we want something to take over and keep the run going. As Hermes is running up the mountain, the family, they carry each other's weight. They realize they can do that as long as they're close. As grief sneaks in and tries to grab hold of them, and they fi find out they have strength as long as they're together. And then we move out of grief's way and 
we remember the cosmic reality of this beautiful thing, which is birth and how we can love something so much. And um, we just, we pray and we hope that time is meeting, you know, little Hermes on top of the mountain. And, you know, that's where, you know, you know, that's where the whole thing explodes. And it would be such a miraculous and wonderful moment if that should, should happen, if, if science and time would meet Hermes, you know, and it's a wonderful, reassuring thing to know that right now there are doctors, you know, working their butts off to try and fix this little wonderful magical boy. And that's reassuring. And we need to remember that, that in all of this darkness with chronic illness and, you know, that sort of thing, there are absolutely doctors out there fighting, you know, for the lives of these people. And it's not just children, it's adults, it's everybody. There are so many things we need to fix. And there are doctors, there are, you know, powers at play that try to improve the lives of these people. And that is really something worth taking into this concert, you know, because the shadows are obvious enough. We need to bring focus to the lights. So this became a little bit of a fantastical adventure, and and I'm just sending my love out to to this this wonderful little family, and and um, I hope I can you know do them justice in this in this uh, concert, this little movement for little Hermes, and um, and that's it for today. I'm going to continue working on this thing, and and. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow for day six of this thing. Take care for now. Thank you.